Hi everyone, we're going to talk a little bit about intervals today and in particular how they can help you uh, improve your playing and improve your musicality, improve your ear and improve your sight reading. Uh, the first thing we've got to familiarise ourselves with is actually the intervals themselves. So I'm going to use a major scale and I'm going to use the scale of C major, which as we all know is all white notes starting from C, so I'm going to use middle C. And uh, all I'm going to do is find the distance from the root note, so the C, and every subsequent note in it. So obviously C with itself is just C. Now, if that were played with a little C on a different instrument, we'd call that unison. Um, but you can't do unison on a single piano because obviously they're all tuned to different notes. But as soon as you start to move to different notes within that scale, we get, as you can well imagine, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then we don't call it an eighth as such, we call it, we just call it an octave, which you're probably already familiar with the term of anyway. Uh, so when it comes to our seconds and our thirds, we call those major seconds and major thirds because of their position as uh, as where they are in the C major scale. So C, D, E is the start of the C major scale. Therefore, C to D is a major second and C to E is a major third. Now, similarly, that's exactly the same when we jump up to the sixth. So C to A and exactly the same when we jump up to the seventh. So C to B, we call those major. So our major intervals in the key of C major are C, D, C, E, C, A, and C, B. Now when you're practicing intervals, it's worth using um, a little bit of, uh, uh, it, it, it's worth playing them one of two different ways and sort of getting used to how they sound. I've just played them how we term it harmonically, which basically just means play them at the same time, play both notes at the same time. Um, but if you play them melodically, so one note after the other, um, and you can do that upwards and downwards as well, there's your second, or it works, as I say, backwards as well, and then a third, then it's just another way of training your ear. Here's the sixth, and here's the seventh. Okay, brilliant. So, um, that just leaves us with the other intervals that are within that scale. So the fourth, the fifth, and the octave. So the reason that I've left these out are because these aren't actually major intervals, but they're also not minor intervals either. So they're called perfect intervals, and they're called so uh, because they appear in both the major and the minor versions of this scale. Uh, so in this case, C major and C minor both have the same fourth, the same fifth, and obviously because it's the same note, just a different pitch, the octave. So the fourth would be C to F, the fifth would be C to G, and then of course the octave would be C to the C, uh, to the C above it. And we call these perfect intervals. Now, normally you don't hear people refer to a perfect octave as such, but it is strictly a perfect octave, but you tend to hear people refer to it more as an octave, uh, just an octave. Uh, but with a fourth and a fifth, they are perfect fourth and perfect fifth. So to play those melodically, you'd have a four and a fifth and an octave. a slight anomaly here in as much as the second so let's just talk about that ever so slightly uh, the second is um, the same in the major and the minor scale so don't be fooled by that it's a major second when it's in the major scale like we've already established C to D is in the major scale so that's a major second however that same starting two notes also appears in the C minor scale so C and D, but that is still a major second. To make it a minor second, I'm just going to reduce that distance by one semitone. So take the D, take the second note, and flatten it effectively. So D flat, so you've got C and D flat. There you go. 
Now, the way, the reason that it's very important and very exciting to learn intervals is because it really, really does help us to um, to to help read music as well as developing our ear, which all that playing through them and listening to them and playing them melodically that we've just done um, will help. It also helps with our sight reading because what happens is you start to be able to see uh, the distance on a sheet on a sheet of music. So, for example, a second is literally any note and the note above it, whether that be a line or a space. And then it just moves gradually through them. I want you to start to realise exactly how many uh, lines and spaces there are between, um, between these um, notes then it really makes it easier because it means that you're not looking at each note individually. Uh, you're looking at maybe the top or the bottom note and you're working it out from your own instinct and working out uh, why or what intervals they are. And there you're getting your second note from that. Now, obviously, I'm in the key of C major here, but this is where it becomes very important to understand different scales and different key signatures. So, for example, if I moved up to the key of D major like that, and played um, the F sharp and the C sharp, which we have in D major rather than F and C natural, then it means that I just have to get into that new mindset so that if I saw something like what should be on your screen right now, um, then I would look at it and I'd immediately go, well, that's a third. But because now I recognize that I'm in the key of D major and I'm in the mindset, I will automatically be able to go, well, it's a D and an F sharp rather than a D and an F natural because I will just be in the mindset of D major. Uh, yeah, the mindset of D major. So it's very important to get into that mindset. Now, I have linked the blog uh, below. It's due to go up this weekend on um, on Saturday at eight o'clock. So it might not work until Saturday at eight o'clock, but do come back, check back on the link. Um, and that will give you a much more, um, that, that will break it down a lot more in terms of how you recognise uh, to, to spot different intervals on sheet music and it will sort of break it down a little bit more. And also explain how you can use it to help towards chords. So for example, if you see more than one note at the same time, you can still use your knowledge of intervals to uh, work out um, a, a three, four, five note chord even, rather than just sort of working up the staff and figuring out each note individually. Okay, so as I've already said, uh, we can really help to develop our musical ear, but sometimes it's really good to have what we call sort of uh, reference pieces for intervals so that we can um, get used to them. So we can use all those intervals and sort of put them into a piece of music uh, that already exists. Now I'm going to use the piece, uh, the key of C major, and I've transposed everything so that it, it falls nicely within this scale. Um, but just to give you some examples, and you, you'll obviously find your own as you go along as well. Here are some examples. We've got Happy Birthday is a classic example of a major, major second. So, like that. Um, Vivaldi's Spring, there's your major third, so. That's just the first few notes of it, but it's that that you're looking for. The Kukadasha, which is a good example of the perfect fourth. So there's your, fir there's your fourth and the way that it falls in is like that. Um, and then, of course, if you move on to the perfect fifth, uh, something like uh, Elvis can't help falling in love. So wise men say so. Like that. Uh, if you're doing the major sixth, so... No, my bonnie lies over the ocean, it's just that. Like that. Uh, major seventh, I mean, there's not many examples of this to be fair, but one of the ones that uh, after a little bit of hunting down, I, I came across one and it was uh, Take On Me by Aha, which is. So C, B, C. And there's numerous ones that do an octave, um, but I, one of the absolute classic ones, and one of the ones that's used a lot for vocal warm-ups as well, because it's a classic octave jump, is over the rainbow, so.
okay? Uh, but there's also, I mean, find, find your own and take note of them as well when you're learning pieces of music because that will really help you as well. You know, you'll, you'll start to be able to hear them and pick them out in pieces of music. And we're not necessarily saying that you need to be able to uh, have perfect pitch and be able to say, well, it's in C major, D major, E major, whatever it is. But it's really good to be able to pick out those intervals so that when you do come to playing music um, and you want to just do a little bit by ear, then you can do so uh, without uh, without thinking overthinking it. You know those those intervals will come a lot more naturally. Uh, so get learning the intervals. There's all your major ones and your perfect ones, um, and then maybe in a later video we'll cover the minor ones just to get you a bit more started with them. But certainly that's a great starting point for you: major intervals and perfect intervals, and you'll be well on the way to improving your musicianship your piano playing, your theory, your um, sight reading, your musical ear, instinct, everything. So get on it.